starting Black and Fashion Council really, I think that was that was my way of saying that the industry needed a new standard. Um, we needed a new way, I think, to discuss and talk about things that were actually moving things forward. The problem with, I think, you know, any industry, but I think specifically fashion and media beauty is what we do is so subjective. So when I when I was younger, I used to rip out pages of a magazine of, you know, if I liked somebody on the cover or if they did a shoot that I thought was really cool, um, I would put that up on my wall. But there are a million decisions that go into how that shoot happens, um, just as much as, you know, when you start liking a musician or you start liking a certain movie or TV show, there are a million decisions made by people in the industry to say that this is cool, to say that this is worthy of your attention. And so often what we're talking about really is, is largely representation to say that, you know, a movie that is produced by this black director should, should get an, just as much press and attention and promotion, et cetera, as, you know, a movie written by a, a white director as well. Um, and I think, for me, in starting Black and Fashion Council, we really wanted to make sure that a lot of the companies have the policies, they have you know, the things that are saying, we have all this to make sure employee standards are a certain way, but they're just not putting everything into practice. Um, and they're often doing the front facing thing of, we'll do an event with a Black person or we'll do um, a runway show that has Black models or we'll do a campaign that has diverse casting, but everybody who works at the company and who's in power of the company is still white or all the board members are still white or um, everybody who is, you know, it, even just making decisions at the company is still white and maybe ha they have Black assistants. And so a lot of it for me is getting past those numbers because a lot of the companies have a great percentage of diverse people that work there. It's really that most of the people of color that work at these companies are entry level or assistants and aren't getting promoted and aren't getting to a senior role. And so um, it that really charged me up to try to work with the companies to get to that next level because ultimately when we're talking about representation we're talking about the pipeline and we're talking about you know companies being held accountable and so um it's been a huge challenge i think for companies to really wrap their heads around oh we thought we were doing enough we thought you know we thought we did this panel for black history month we thought that was enough it's not um, and i think that every company has you know had some kind of reckoning or realization in talking to their employees that, you know, there have been a lot of microaggressions or they haven't, you know, noticed a lot of behaviors that were really harmful. Um, they haven't checked that, you know, the person that, you know, says things in meetings that are really inappropriate and allow it. And I think to your point about allyship, I mean, my big thing that we always say for Black and Fashion Council is that allyship has to be active. Allyship is not silent, allyship is not whispered. And the thing that always drives me nuts is when people think that allyship is sitting in a boardroom and you're agreeing with that person of color, but you don't say anything, but you go up to them after the meeting or you go up to them in the bathroom later and say, oh yeah, you were totally right. And it's like, well, I needed your help at that moment. What I don't need is for you to come to me after and say that you agree and you co-sign and helping me, you know, and supporting this argument. And so I think often there are so many opportunities, people are just honestly too scared. And I think that's what, you know, when we say like, you want to see the table, you don't just want I've never just wanted a seat at the table just to sit there and be grateful. I want a seat at the table to be able to make the changes that need to happen, to shift the table, to make this table different. Um, and I think often, you know, POC feel like once we get to that table, um, I think too many POC are often just grateful and scared to say anything because they don't feel that sense of allyship or they feel like, well, maybe I should just go start my own thing and build my own table because I don't feel welcome here. And so I think that allyship portion is huge. Um, and everyone, I think, always has a chance to be a better ally. Mm 